So welcome back to Silver Linings. My name is Chrissy, and this is your 15 minute stretch session. Today, we're gonna to be starting lying on our backs. So I'm gonna recommend one or possibly even two mats or a mat and a towel so that you really feel supported. And if you do have any sensitivity in the lower back, that that feels nice and cushioned. Later on, we'll be on all fours and then standing. So moving our way towards a beautiful tall posture that you can carry through your day. As always, I would advise that you bring your device somewhere where you can see or even hear me clearly, such that you don't need to keep lifting your head or adjusting your uh, setup to see and hear every move. So without further ado, let's go ahead and come to your space. Make sure you have that lovely soft mat or towel prepared. And then come and lie all the way down, checking that you're in the center of your mat and as aligned as possible. And then walk the feet a little closer towards your heels, towards your seat rather, but not so close that you feel any compression in the knee. Make sure that your feet are flat and that there's even weight in all 10 toes. And then today we're gonna to start with just a little movement through the spine and pelvis. It's a little bit like doing a cat and cow, but lying on your back. So placing the hands onto the pelvis, just let your elbows drop by your side. You can close your eyes for a couple of breaths, inhaling smoothly through your nose, and maybe taking this opportunity to make an audible sigh out. <sighs> and feeling as you do so that the whole body, particularly the spine, is just kind of falling into the mat. Imagine you're lying in a sandbox, every little bony, landmark is going to just sit into the sand. Final deep breath in here, keeping that breath flowing now as we start to move the body gently. So we're going to inhale and as you exhale just curl your tailbone under and curve the lower back just off the mat so no higher than your waistband. This is a curve and then as you lower the tailbone you're going to reverse that curve and stick your ribs out so you can feel beneath you a big gap between the ribs and the mat. So that's a kind of the cow bit and this is the cat bit curling under, feeling the lower back extending. That might feel really good if you have a sensitive tight lower back and then go the opposite way. Now when we talk about a neutral spine, it's actually the bit right in the middle where we can honor the natural curves of the spine without being curled and tight like so, or being splayed out and kind of out of our center. So do this two more times and then we're gonna try and find that middle bit, that neutral spine, without laboring it and keep the breath just gently flowing. So from here, as you lower the ribs back into the mat, just feel beneath you a tiny gap where your waistband is. Essentially, that is your neutral spine, and we're going to try and maintain that now as we move between our stretches. Bringing the knees in towards the chest, draw them together and exhale, hug them into the chest. You have the option to lift the head towards your knee joint if that feels good. And then from there, we'll softly lower the legs. Do it one by one if you're in any doubt about your lower back. And then smoothly send the legs long, hip socket width apart, flexing strongly through those feet interlacing the fingers and pushing palms in the opposite direction until you feel yourself get lengthening as long as you can. I like to push the heels one by one and take a little sort of walking action. It just feels like you're elongating there. And then we'll gently curve back in. So it could be one by one with the knees. It could be at the same time if that's not stressing out your lower back. Exhale, hug, chin to chest, forehead to knees. So the tailbone will naturally curl up and off the floor here. That's okay. And then as you lower the feet, really ground the tailbone, shoot those legs out long and find that elongated extension from heel to palm. Now from here, this time we're going to walk into our banana asana, my favourite. We're going to walk the legs across to the left side. So left side foot will be wide, just about as wide as your mat. The right foot is going to hook over your left ankle. From there, you're going to catch your right wrist with your left hand and sweep it overhead until you're in a banana shape. I'll show you that from above. So I'm kind of this way on the mat. It's a shame we can't get a bird's eye view. I need an extra cameraman for that. But see if you can now find just a lengthening through the right side of the body 
but collect, kind of connecting into the mat or releasing into the mat as you go. One more breath here and then we'll walk the feet to the other side. So this time the right foot will be at the edge of your mat, left foot will hook over right. Switch the grip with the hand. So you're now holding left wrist with right hand and taking a side reach. And notice for yourself if one side is much more tight, more restricted than the other side, maybe breathe a little deeper. If like me, you have a little scoliosis of the spine, a little curve of the spine, you definitely feel those differences quite marked in some cases. Breathe into the side body, enjoy. And then definitely come back to center before you hug the knees in. So you make sure you're back in the center of your mat and take a hug of the knees. From here, we'll circle the knees out and around, separating the knees as they come into the chest. Exhale. I think of this as a little heart shape, giving a little love to those hip flexors. Often they work a little harder than we want through our absets, but as we get stronger, that is going to decrease. Reverse your circles right away. So this time we're sending the legs away from us, separating the knees and bringing them around and back into the armpit. See if you can give me a bigger circle with each rep, easing and oozing into that hip joint. Yeah, beautiful. And then from here, we'll set the feet out again, wide as your mat, knees are bent. Sweep your arms out to a T shape. Couple of spinal twists, taking knees to the right and nose to the left. So just like the banana asana, you might feel more resistance one way than the other as you come through center, knees and nose switch direction. Make this a smooth interchange if you can. Deep breath in as you return to center, exhale, knees drop over to the right, nose to the left. And I'm pushing down into my palms in order to draw the shoulders down the back and widen the collarbones. So we're not hunched at the top, we're actually finding ease and openness. Good, from here we're gonna work into our figure four stretch. So go ahead and take your right foot over your left thigh, catch behind the left thigh, and then draw the whole shape in towards your chest. Now remember our cat-cow at the beginning. If your tailbone is lifting up off the floor, could you start to lengthen it back and find that neutral spinal alignment? And with that tailbone connected, then exhale and draw the chest and leg towards each other. And that will feel markedly different in your glute. So try to explore that sense of a weighty tailbone, then the stretch. Some of you will be able to now extend the left leg and push the heel to sky. That's a great little hamstring stretch too. And some might wanna get really excitable if your neck feels okay, press your arms long and use your hands to push your right foot, sorry, left foot overhead. Now that is a big deep stretch, so don't go there unless you feel ready. Always listening to the body. Wherever you are, you can slowly roll out of that stretch and send the arms and legs to the sky and give them a little shake. The cockroach, my favorite. <laughs> so second side then for our figure four stretch. Let's go ahead this time and bring the left foot over right thigh. Feel the knee drive open. As you draw the arms around and behind that right thigh, we're gonna try again to see if we can find the long tailbone, so that neutral spine, and then explore the stretch. And there will be, as I say, a difference. So if I show you one of them, I'm not sure if you can see on screen, but I'm tailbone up versus tailbone long, and then exhaling to draw the shape just a little deeper, that stretch just a touch more. If you did it the first side, please match it on your second with an extension through the right heel to sky and that opportunity, if your neck feels good, to draw the whole shape overhead, which just kind of feels like fun. <laughs> Depends on your idea of fun, of course. And then breathing as you rotate, roll rather, melting the tailbone back. Take a gentle shake of the legs and arms, good. So from here, we're gonna bring the hands behind the knees and just rock up and back, easing through the spine. Remember, this really doesn't have to look like anything. It just has to feel quite nice, like a massage for your spine. If you're working with a very sensitive spine, it might just be better to roll to one side and come up to seated. So do always listen to your body. Coming now to all fours. So making sure if your knees need to be padded, grab a towel or just fold 
your mat over to give yourself that little padding. Spreading your fingers and placing the wrists directly underneath your shoulders and the knees directly underneath the hips. Exploring again as you exhale your angry cat. Inhale, open your chest, long cow. Exhale, scooping, drawing gaze to navel. Inhale, lengthen, open the chest, proud. Do this one more time. Really deep, flowing breaths that accompany this spinal shift. Nice, and then keeping a neutral spine, so there is a gentle sense of connection at your abdominals. We're just gonna circle around on these wrists. And if you have, as we all do actually, spend so much time typing or at a device, the wrists get tired and tight. And then reverse in the circle when you're ready. And if you're getting any sharp needle-like pains, maybe just pull back, or well, not quite such a big circle. And if you need to come onto the wrists and just hold a lovely figure four or go back to the cat and cow, that's a great option too. So you never want to force the wrists in fact, any of your joints. Good, and then we're gonna fold one palm up. So flip the hand, fingertips are still towards your knee, and then you're kind of seeing if you can extend the arm, you won't be able to fully extend it. But you will get a radiating stretch across the front of that wrist. Go ahead and switch sides. And you could do this onto any surface, so if you were in the office, you could just stand up and do this onto the desk. It's a really good stretch. And again, just note for yourself the difference between the right and the left side. Beautiful. From here, grounding both hands again, shoulder width apart, sweeping the right arm up, thread that right arm under and through the gap and place your right ear to the floor. From here, if it feels good, you could extend your left leg. So it's going to put a little bit more weight into the shoulder. You could even lift it off the floor. So it's kind of the reverse of what we were doing on our backs, but loading that and stretching your right shoulder. And then go ahead and release down when you're ready. Taking your time to shift to the other side. Reset, left arm floats high, thread the needle. So send that hand through the gap, resting shoulder, ear and skull to the floor. Some of you will just wish to stay here, which is perfect. Otherwise extending through the right foot, finding that weightiness into the joint so that you can stretch it and the musculature around it and then lengthen the leg away from you. Look at a long heel reach, beautiful. When you're ready, again in your own time, come back down, draw the knee in, good. And from here, we're gonna to come to a downward facing dog. So wrists again, directly under shoulders, hooking your toes under and slowly pushing hips to sky. If you're not a yogi, just think of this as an upside down V shape, a great, Way to stretch the whole back chain of the body. I'm going to start to slowly move one heel down, bending the other leg, and then shift back. If you want to move your head here, or your shoulders press back and forth, make it your own stretch. Good. And you might feel the calves getting a little extension, the Achilles tendon, if you've done some bar cardio with us or you've been running, this is a great way to release all that tension. From here we're going to walk the feet very slowly forward and you might need to bend your knees a lot, so if that's the case for you don't worry. Feet are going to be hip socket width apart, make sure they're parallel, so that means the little toe and the heel are aligned and that actually can feel a little bit internally rotated. And then let the head drop. Now if you are very flexible you're going to stay with your hands on your on the floor and simply take a sort of cat and cow here. If you're a little bit tighter, hands can go on shins or even on top of the knee joint. So choose your poison and then extend through the spine, chest moves up. Exhale, pull into that forward fold. I'm gonna do a couple of those wherever you are. It could be hands on that fleshy part above the knee. Could all work. Just finding breath. So we did this lying down, we did it kneeling, now we're standing and just articulating and stretching the spine and also, of course, the hamstrings. Keeping the knees as soft as you need, keeping the weight forward into the balls of the feet. Let the head and hands be heavy, weighty, as you hollow the abdominals and stack up your spine. Think of this as a moving meditation. How slowly can you extend through the crown of your head? Beautiful. 
And for our final setup, we're going to bring our heels together, toes just fist distance apart. Zip the legs up, give me your tallest, best posture. And we'll finish with three breaths together. Inhale, smoothly reach the arms up. Bring palms to touch if that's comfortable on your shoulders. And then exhale, draw hands down to heart center. Maybe close your eyes and finish our practice with the eyes closed, feeling the ground beneath you, feeling a gorgeous length through your torso and a deep restorative breath in and out. Hands float to prayer and come to rest at chest. Last time, inhale, smooth, widening of the arms, chest opens, shoulders glide down the back. Exhale, grow taller as your hands come to heart center. Let them rest there for a moment, giving gratitude for everything your body can do and giving gratitude for the time that you've given your body to be eased and lengthened. As you gently flicker the eyes open, reacquaint yourself with daylight, give yourself a little pat on the back and I'll say a big thank you for joining me here at Silver Linings. It's always a pleasure to spend time together and we'll see you guys back on the mat very soon indeed.